of you, here we begin with the last class <clears throat> for CMA final. And uh, we have to do two small topics. One is income tax authorities and another is the Black Money Act. So first we will take up the Black Money Act. Okay, right? See from where we have started, you know, return of income assessment procedure, and um, all those ICDS, tax planning. Hmm? Only thing pending from my side is one is mock test papers. Already past exams link you all are having. I have posted in the group mock test paper discussion of last year before that all. Hmm? And uh, this time, of course, we will discuss the mock test paper. And uh, paper pattern and all, you know it. If there's any doubt, let me know. Question number one is 10 marks, uh, 20, and 10 MCQs are there for two marks each and um, 20 marks are reserved. And in the 80 marks, you have got two, six, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven questions. Out of that, any five you need to attempt for 16 marks each, five questions, that makes it 80 marks. And in 60 marks, they are divided 8-8. Eight, eight. <clears throat> 8 marks ke liye mat, 8 marks ke liye cut me, uh, cup method. 8 marks ke liye trust ka problem, 8 marks ke liye theory question. That tax planning and all that. So like this, they will ask you. Yeah, and some questions which we solved in non-resident and DTA, you remember? IFDA and all that. Those questions are asked for 4-4 four, four marks. Okay, right? So this is just to give you an overview. And now you all need to repeat and keep pouring in the doubts. From today, yesterday I have cleared all the doubts that education says and all. Today more doubts were coming for trust and all. After the class, I'll do that also. I'm into some schedule now. So okay, whenever it is time for missing, but you keep putting all your doubts in the group, will surely clear it. And now what you need is repetition, okay? And now these last topics I want to talk about dear students. Literally some students, look at the page numbers. I don't know, if we talk trust, ki baat kare, to four page mushkil se hai. So, so many times one MCQ is asked or short note in question number eight. So why you want to miss that? It One short note is fixed, <clears throat> comparative of ICDS and AS. 10 we have done comparatives ki where they differ and all. So one they will ask from that. One is fixed from your transfer pricing. Write a short note on rollback or advanced pricing agreement or 92D documentation. So something related to transfer pricing. One is fixed ICDS, one is fixed assessment procedure and one is fixed this black money. So black money topic, rather than leaving, we should do it. And if it comes in MCQs, two mark each MCQ is very important, no? And it's an important act, which is already there in the CMA final since years. Now in CA syllabus also, they are introducing. So <clears throat> already we are doing it good only. And it's very nice, worth learning. Shalom. So I'm starting with the black money act right now. First, already the material is there with all of you. Anything you want to say in the beginning, please ask or comment or whatever it is in the chat box. Chat box is open for that. And what help do you need from my side? I tried to make a revision lecture yesterday for that underreported income. But then some of you felt that it was little very quick. So it is not for learning, dear students. Revision lecture is you know everything, but you have learned it so in-depth and now you want a gist. So only those who have learned will understand. If you have not learned and if you think you can learn from the lecture, then no teacher can teach the whole gist of three classes into one class that two of half an hour. Got it? So this is just a gist revision so that you remember the important points. But sure, very nice suggestions came. It would have been more fruitful with an example also. Under reporting, I have not discussed example. Because regular class, the first lecture is full of examples only. And you all have access to these regular lectures and revision videos also I'm putting in the app only. So that you can watch that also two, three times. What else you need now, my help? Because I don't want to go on till the end. Bus okay, actually. It was like 
closed till 15th, but we are extending because we took a gap yesterday. Otherwise, 25th was promised, but 15th completed. And now, last days are for you to work on your own. Okay? Chalo. <clears throat> So what, uh, what is about all this is Income Tax Act is uh, separate and this black money, okay, this black money act is separate. Basically, the name itself says black money is not black in color. It's like the illegal money earned by people on which they have not paid tax. And it is not always there with the SSEs in the form of money terms. In my book, the cash is 60 lakhs. But in my house, the cash is 6 crores. No, I don't have any 6 crores. Just giving an example. Books mein 60 lakhs. How is it is? 6 crores. So definitely that extra cash is the income earned by me. Benami income black money. On which I have not paid tax. Whenever it gets caught up in the act, you have to pay 30% tax. Such as he says, jo bhi hai. <clears throat> Along with this, we have undisclosed income and they are talking about undisclosed assets also. Now, what is undisclosed assets? Okay, I earned 6 crore rupees. I did not declare it with government. But I made a very hi-fi bungalow with all the superb interiors and I put all my black money into that. Huh? So, what is happening? My black money is not in the form of cash. It is in the form of the asset, properties and gold and investments, any form hmm? out of India. So all this is like, you can say, ma'am, agar India mein, to India mein we already have, know that. Underreported income, misreported income and section 69 series, yaad hai sabko? Unexplained investment, unexplained expenditure, cash credit. So this is my income which I have earned outside India or my asset outside India and I have not disclosed it. People earn huge outside India. If they disclose, they can take the DTA benefit and take the tax rate. So that income when it is disclosed in India, 30% is the tax. And then to there are 88 sections in the Black Money Act, not in your syllabus. You need to have the overview. You need to know what is the scope and important things, definitions, how it's going to be taxed. That's enough. Okay? And this Black Money Act is applicable to whole of India, including Jammu and Kashmir. Okay? So when it started and all that story I'm telling you now, pay attention. <clears throat> Yeah, black money. Yes, yes, sure. I will also make it as quick and best as possible so that you all remember the crux of it for the exam rather than going ye bhi hai, ye bhi hai for me. It is like, frankly speaking, it's very easy to go on teaching. But I know it is too vast. Like if you talk about this table, it's not possible to remember all this. So just know it is there and enough. What is important for exam point of view and for understanding actually base level pe ye act kya hai? That's what we are doing now. Okay? Right? Chalo. So, Black Money and Imposition Act. The act to make provision to deal with problems of the black money, undisclosed foreign income and foreign asset. The procedure for dealing with such income and to provide imposition of tax, interest, penalties, all what you have earned outside India. But one thing should be clear, dear students, already our whole syllabus is over. So now one base level idea you all should have. And uh, in fact, I want all of you to write it also here. And what does it say? It says, either black money, when income you are getting from the foreign country, and you are treating it as black money and paying 30% tax or undisclosed income in India, you know, what they find in the raid cases or in surveys and uh, income escaping assessment and all that. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can't tax it doubly. 
ओके ओके ब्लैक मनी में जो फॉरेन में कमाए थर्टी परसेंट टैक्स दो इंडिया आगे अच्छा इंडिया में भी पहले कभी नहीं बताया दिस इज अंडर रिपोर्टेड इनकम चलो अगेन पे टैक्स नो आइर इन इंडिया वेन यू हैव सच काइंड ऑफ बेनामी इनकम इट इज अनडिस्कलोज इनकम और मिस रिपोर्टेड इनकम एंड ऑल एंड आउटसाइड इंडिया इट्स कॉल्ड एज वॉट ब्लैक मनी चलो now the black money and imposition of the act has been introduced in the parliament which thereafter received precedence asin and notified and started in july 2015 act extends to whole of india and tax 30% shall be charged on every ssc for every assessment year in respect total undisclosed foreign income and assets of the previous year are there underline this whenever your foreign income is caught up and foreign asset is caught up it is taxable at 30% in the year when you are caught up with that but suppose that um, i have purchased a house in 2012 for 12 lakhs undisclosed maine kabhi kisi ko bataya nahi ki mera ghar hai london mein now when it got disclosed in 2020 the value of the house was 23 lakhs so 30% kis pe lagega 23 lakhs whenever your assets are brought into the radar of taxability that time what is the taxability of the shares of the investments of the gold of the whatever properties whatever capital asset you say whenever it is brought at that rate it becomes taxable whatever is the fair market value are you all noting down these extra things ye bhi likho either black money and all and this also you write down clear shall we start with the terms or definitions there were you know sections also for definitions i hope you remember all the definitions are given in section 2 sub section 21 31 jo bhi hai so no need for all that some definitions exactly the way they have given in the income tax act right? ssc means a person being a resident other than not ordinary resident in india other than not ordinary resident means resident and ordinary resident will only pay the tax within the meaning by whom tax in respect of undisclosed foreign income and assets or any other sum is payable and includes every person who is deemed to be ssc in default resident and ordinary resident if you are and if you have any undisclosed income or undisclosed assets outside india and then it is proof ki it's your signature your name and though everything is in your wife's name but funding to you have only done and all that it will be caught up and taxable okay for taxability of undisclosed uh, this uh, for taxability of this income black money and all the previous year now this previous year they have given the definition we are discussing but it's so simple previous year always starts from 1st april of the financial year to the 31st march of the next financial year suppose i started my new business on 1st august then obviously it will start from 1st august huh? new business and suppose closed business i was already doing some business since 1st april but then i closed it on 30th of september so my financial year for the taxability purpose will be april to september write down normal financial year is 21 22 if it is a new business the day you start your business till 31st march is your first financial year it need not be 12 months and when you are closing from the first day of the financial year till the date you are closing it's like ma'am aisa lag raha hai pure haathi gode chale gaye aur ab aap kya padha rahe i mean see we have done such technical things like international taxation this that that and now we are doing this hmm? 
so it's easy no anything not clear please ask me and then i'll tell you one or two expected questions from this also the period beginning from the date of setting of business and ending on the closure of business of 31st march whichever is earlier so period beginning from the date on which new source of income starts 1st august and ending on the date of closure or 31st day following the date on which such is earlier and the begin period beginning from the first day of the financial year and ending with the date of discontinuation of the business other than business referred in b or dissolution of unincorporated body and you know, all liquidation ke case mein you know first day of the financial year until the company is winded up and all it will go on next the period of 12 months commencing on the first day of april to the relevant year in any other case these are called as previous years now what is your undisclosed asset undisclosed asset located outside india means any asset including financial interest means you are a partner in entity you have a share in the profits of some venture and all more i'll talk about financial interest that is also your asset no i am 30% owner of a partnership firm in canada so that is an asset located outside india held by sse in his name or in respect of which he is the beneficial owner sometimes asset is located in the name of my grandfather but my grandfather has already made a will that everything should be transferred to my granddaughter so i am the beneficial owner and he has no explanation about the source of investment if you are saying mera nahi hai mujhe nahi malum ye building kiska hai then you need to prove the thing simple he has no explanation about the source of investment in such asset or explanation given by him is in the opinion of ao unsatisfactory check please this definition undisclosed asset it is any asset you know when we say about asset means in income tax class it's only capital asset don't talk your stock in trade and your current assets and all and it's not like fixed asset and wo sab accounting term hai income tax mein capital asset is gold jewelry paintings sculptures antiques all that ha huh? shares so undisclosed asset located outside india means any asset including financial interest located held by ss in his own name or uh, of which he is a beneficial owner and he has no explanation about the source of investment or the explanation given by him is not satisfactory you know undisclosed foreign income and asset means total amount of undisclosed income of ssc from a source located outside india and the value of undisclosed asset located outside india as per section 4 and computed in the man so some undisclosed income is income which he has earned outside india and you have to calculate that income be it house property or business or anything undisclosed asset located outside india <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> it shall be chargeable to tax at its value in previous year in which asset comes to the notice of ao star mark this point you know so that when you read it again it should be like very clear ki kya weightage ke sath padhna in fact there are valuation rules also in the black money act i'm not teaching you but hey so whenever an undisclosed asset located outside india is chargeable to tax the year when it comes in the notice of ao what is the fair market value take it value of undisclosed asset fair market value including financial interest okay financial interest agar kahi hai to wahan pe bhi sab assets ki fair market minus liability so you will get capital's value and then divide it in the partners there are rules and they can ask actually they should have asked you the problems and all but wo nahi hai aapke syllabus mein hmm 
this is not the material but i have added it past exam they have asked the question but study material mein to nahi dikha mujhe what do you mean by the financial interest two three times they said that undisclosed asset outside india includes financial interest so what do you mean by financial interest financial interest would include but would not be limited to any of the following so it would include what all agent nominee outside india attorney or a person acting in some other capacity on behalf of resident assessee corporation in which resident owns directly or indirectly any voting power partnership in which the resident assessee owns directly or indirectly any interest trust of which the resident has beneficial or ownership interest are you getting trust of which the resident has beneficial or ownership interest matlab india ke bahar koi trust hai ya aap usme beneficiary ho ya aapka beneficial interest hai this beneficiary beneficial interest we have done in the non resident also first class <clears throat> any other entity in which resident owns directly or indirectly any voting power or equity interest or assets or interest in the profit fir se any entity now anything it could be a cooperative society a firm a joint venture anything in which resident owns voting power or equity or interest or in asset or in profits in short the gist of all this is you have a share of interest outside india chahe wo partnership firm hai llp hai company hai or any other like they call it corporations in the out country hmm? so financial interest would include but would not be limited to any of the following an agent nominee but would not be limited to means it's not ki only this these are just examples agent nominee attorney corporation may you are have a having a voting power partnership may you are having the interest in profits and capital a trust of which resident has beneficial ownership and other entity <clears throat> scope of total undisclosed foreign income and asset the total undisclosed for this is asked huh? write a short note on the scope of total undisclosed foreign income in fact this times mock test paper also they have a question on the black money computation of the total undisclosed foreign income and the assets as per the black money act one thing i feel bad the way they ask questions ekdam relevant answers to material mein to they are not giving You have to search the bare act and everything, and then gain all this. Okay. Computation of assets we can do, and foreign income is the routine. How you compute your income? Chal. Scope of the total undisclosed foreign income and asset. how will you decide ki is this your foreign income and undisclosed income the total undisclosed foreign income and asset of previous year shall be income from a source located outside india which has not been disclosed in the return of income you have filed a return of income but you did not disclose that or income from a source located outside india in respect of which a return is required to be furnished but no return of income has been furnished under 139 act hmm? so there is income from the sources located outside india which has not been disclosed in the return means you have filed the return but you didn't disclose how much you have earned from the sources outside india here they say return is filed income from sources outside india which has not been disclosed 
in the return furnished or income from sources outside india in respect of which return is required to be furnished return in ibara and value of undisclosed asset outside india so these are the three cases wherein it will be taxable any variation made in income from sources outside india the total income as per the income tax with the provisions of 29 to 43 and 57 to 59 on transfer pricing shall not be included in total undisclosed foreign income hmm? so according to income tax provisions you will not adjust anything to avoid double taxation income included in total undisclosed income and asset shall not form part of the total income tax ye to logically clear yahan pe likh do these these provisions will not apply these provisions will not apply these provisions will not apply okay undisclosed income is that undisclosed income which you should have you know what is scope matlab koi chargeability hai ki that should have been disclosed you didn't disclose in your return or related to which you should have filed your return you didn't file or there is an asset outside india but in any of these three cases if they are taxed in india indian income tax rules will not apply transfer pricing and bidden business had allowed disallowed wo sab nahi lagega and second thing is income will not be taxed double that i already told you earlier also okay now now from here till this whole page is very important mcq based questions can also be asked here in computing the total undisclosed foreign income and asset of the previous year no deduction in respect of expenditure or allowance or set off any loss shall be allowed to ssc whether or not it is allowable in accordance with the provisions of the income tax act hmm to koi deduction nahi milega aapko just like your casual income no deduction no exemption and nothing any income which has been assessed to tax in assessment year or income tax act prior to assessment year to which act applies or which is assessable or has been assessable to tax shall be reduced from the value of undisclosed income located outside india if ssc furnishes evidence to you that asset has been acquired from income which has been assessed oh now this means partially undisclosed you can write here the meaning partially undisclosed means you are showing that in uh, you have purchased a building for 10 crore but actually the fair market value of that building is 40 crore so whenever this is caught up do you need to pay 40 crores answer is no 10 crore to already you have shown na read it i'll give you time to write the example so no deductions are allowed expenditure set off of losses wo sab nahi milega any income which has been assessed to tax to any assessment year that's not going to be taxable or which is assessable to tax it shall be reduced from the value of undisclosed income if ssc furnishes detail that asset has been acquired and as the case may be aapko samajh mein aaya means what that if the out of 40 crores building you have purchased it's not that you have not disclosed your spain ka building spain mein aapka ek building hai but aapne 10 crore value you have shown whereas actually it is 40 crore so now how much is going to be taxable 30 crores clear right so this is the concept for movable immovable there are different rules i'll make you write that in the notebook so that will be more clear pehle aap pad lo amount of deduction in case of immovable property shall be amount which bears to the value of asset as on the first day of the financial year in which becomes notice of the ao the same proportion as assessable foreign income bears to the total cost of the asset means if you have partially shown the asset how will you do it see they have already given one example also check 
a house property is located outside india it was acquired and an ssc in the previous year 9 and 10 for 50 lakhs theek hai out of 50 lakh 20 lakh was assessed to tax in the total income of the previous year hmm 9 10 ki income hai aur wo 20 lakhs to already taxable hai na so already if you are paying the tax on 20 lakhs why you need to pay the tax again are you getting 20 lakhs was assessed to tax he's he has shown the income see you have purchased a house in 2009 and 10 for 50 lakhs in that 20 lakhs is legal money your declared income assessed income jis pe aapne tax kiya usme se bhare and 30 lakhs upar upar such undisclosed income is now caught up and now the value is 1 crore to 50 lakhs fair market value mein how much you had disclosed that time 20 lakhs that this is a story of 2009 and 10 allow me to write pay attention on the screen 50 lakhs ki fair market value mein you have disclosed 20 lakh in those years okay okay when i purchased the property for 50 lakhs i'm repeating 20 lakhs i had disclosed like i had earned the income and out of that i paid the money and purchased 30 lakhs to be undisclosed tha now today the ao has caught up and he said the fair market value of the property is 1 crore so 1 crore full will not become taxable ha if this is fully undisclosed then 1 crore will become taxable but you have partially disclosed na 20 lakhs to 50 lakhs mein 20 lakhs disclosed tha 1 crore mein disclosed ki value bhi to double ho gayi 50 lakh value has become 1 crore in 10 years 20 lakhs 40 lakhs so how much now you will disclose to government 60 lakh bolo write down write down and see how they are also calculating and getting the answer and if it is clear put me a message you can scribble there and if you don't have this then put it in your notebook write down the cross multiplication logic which i have given they have also worked out like that only it's easy only but still finished yeah this is only for immovable properties and huh? this rule amount of deduction in case of immovable property shall be amount which bears to the value of the property fair market value as on the 1st april in which it comes to notice of the you the same proportion as assessable or assessed income bears to the total cost of the asset clear nice clear chalo hmm 
and if you want write down please that this is for immovable property for movable property whatever is the fair market value on that but someone is arguing ma'am i have purchased this car for 2 lakh in 2001 and 2 wo malum nahi hai aaj agar car ki value kitni hai car to chalo value kam hi hoti hai koi aur asset le lete hain jewelry hmm you have purchased i'll write it properly if the jewelry that is movable asset ma is purchased in 2006 and 7 for 2 lakh when disclosed the value is 15 lakhs so this value will be taxable fair market value the day year in which it got disclosed on that 1st april whatever is the fair market value that will be taxable ma'am fir why did you minus here this is only for immovable property they are taking proportionate movable asset ke liye kuch nahi hai when you purchased it that time the value was 2 lakh but you to didn't disclose no all these years if you would have disclosed in 6 you would have paid the tax also in 6 7 you are disclosing now in 21 22 So twenty one twenty two. What is the fair market value? Fifteen lakhs. That will become taxable. Write down, please, this example. Done. Finish writing. So, how will you compute the undisclosed income and asset? No deduction, expenditure, allowance, set off, and all, and income which has been assessed under Income Tax Act prior to that, and which is assessable, both will be reduced. Income also and asset also. Immovable property you will get proportionate to this. Is go circle yeah, say bracket with dal ke rakho. Is this example clear? Jewelry ke case where you will not have even if they say ma'am two lakh me se fifty thousand to disclose kya tha no. Whatever is the fair market value will become taxable. Okay. So from till here it was very important these first two pages. Now it's the procedural part. how they will manage hmm, tax income tax authorities as we have income tax authorities so there are authorities who are having the jurisdiction on the ssc and they can ask him to bring all the details in change of income and in case the authority is changed by another authority as a result of change in jurisdiction you have shifted from hyderabad to jammu and all that then it will continue proceeding from the stage at which he has left that is very common story if i have shifted from hyderabad to jammu and some case is going on it was like 60% hearing and all is done the other will not start from the scratch he will carry on from the 61 matlab aage se carry on karenge okay right assessment ao may on receipt of information from authority or under any other law for time being in force send notice requiring him on specified date to produce the books of accounts and documents okay no separate return is required to be filed see generally we ask them to file a return no for income escaping assessment and all but here it is not required and there is no time limit for issuance of notice ao may issue the notice any time whenever they get the information so and so person is having black money or foreign assets undisclosed assets ao may from time to time serve further notices requiring the production of such other doc accounts or documents or evidence as he may require ao may make such inquiry as he considers necessary for the purpose of obtaining full information in respect of undisclosed foreign income and asset hmm? assessing of the uh, officer after considering such accounts documents evidence as he may obtain and after taking into account relevant material as gathered and all 
ये प्रोसीजर पूछ सकते हैं आपको शॉर्ट नोट में फर्स्ट तो एओ विल चेक वेन एवर दे हैव अ डाउट दे विल इशू अ नोटिस गेट एस ऑल द डॉक्यूमेंट्स एंड प्रूफ दे कैन इंक्वायर एंड आफ्टर कंसिडरिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्स एविडेंस ऑल दिस इंक्वायरी एंड ऑल ही मे इशू ऑर्डर इन राइटिंग um assess the undisclosed income and assets and determine the sum payable such order shall be made within 2 years from end of financial year in which notice was issued see you have time for reassessment no four years block assessment and all but this doesn't have time but whenever notice is issued within 2 years from the end of the financial year notice is issued assessment should be completed if the person fails to comply with the notice अरे बेनामी अकाउंट है बैंक अकाउंट है फॉरेन में उसका डिटेल लाओ मिलने आओ करो यू आर नॉट रिस्पॉन्डिंग देन दे विल डू द बेस्ट जजमेंट असेसमेंट आफ्टर टेकिंग इन टू अकाउंट ऑल फैक्स एंड असेट्स टू द डिटर्मिन एंड बिफोर मेकिंग एन असेसमेंट एंड अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ बींग हर्ड इज डेफिनेटली गिवन टू द एस एस सी इज द प्रोसीजर सिंपल एंड क्लियर इजी देखो फिर से whenever the ao has got information that the ssc has got undisclosed income outside india or asset outside india he will ask him to get all the details document he'll call him to meet he'll collect all the information and according to that proceed and do the assessment of that additional income there's no time limit when the notice can be issued it can be issued any time when they have proper information but once the notice is issued within 2 years from the end of the financial year in which notice is issued so if the notice is issued in 39 21 to ye kab khatam hota hai march 22 yahan se 2 saal means till march 24 all the assessment should be completed no losses allowed no expenditures allowed nothing and if the person is not responding do the best judgment assessment theek hai right now in the black money act also you have all the other uh, sections like here we have rectification 154 there 12 notice of demand you remember 30 days time is given for demand and all that is 13 commissioner appeals 15 16 17 tribunal 18 yahan pe 250 to 255 high court 260a here 19 supreme court 261 here 21 revision 263 264 here 23 24 ye kuch yaad nahi rehne wala but just you should have idea that in black money also they have this procedure to so just are for reading tax recovery officer you remember tax recovery officer can recover the money by four ways attach the property and sell and recover the money or put him in imprisonment and then release on the payment of taxes or appoint someone to dispose of the assets and so on interest 234 abc bhi hai sab yahan power regarding inspection and all theek hai yeah very this is nice at least you should have idea you remember in income tax we have section 131 then rate to 132 132 b surveys and all that so all powers are there no to call for information to examine him on oath to ask him to submit all documents and books all that power is there in the black money act also liability of the manager of a company every person being manager at any time during financial year shall be jointly and severally liable for the payment of an amount due under the act in respect of company if the amount cannot be recovered from the company however if manager proves that non recovery cannot be attributed to his neglect on his part then he may not be applied so in short you know whenever there is a default in case of the company तो कंपनी के केस में हु विल हैव टू बी लाइबल टू पे ऑल मनी एंड इम्प्रेजमेंट एंड ऑल मैनेजर बट इफ मैनेजर कैन प्रूव दैट विदाउट हिज नॉलेज फ्यू ऑफ द स्टाफ हैव डन दिस फ्रॉड एंड ऑल देन दे मे बी एक्सक्यूज ऑल्सो जॉइंट एंड सेवरल लाइबिलिटी ऑफ द पार्टिसिपेंट्स एवरी पर्सन बींग अ पार्टिसिपेंट इन एन अन इनकॉर्पोरेटेड बॉडी एट एनी टाइम ड्यूरिंग फिनेंशियल ईयर 
or representative SSA of DCs participants shall be jointly liable along with the unincorporated body for the payment of amount payable by body under this act or all the provisions, you know. So on behalf of a firm and all, if the partners are there and if the partners are not there, then DCs participants, whoever are the successors, huh? they are liable to pay till they hold the assets. All this we have done. However, if the partner or LLP proves that non-recovery cannot be attributable to negligence on this part, then they may not apply. Hmm? Failure to disclose the foreign income, 300% penalty. In India, if there is under-reporting, what is the penalty? 50% of the tax. Misreporting, six cases, when it will go for misreporting, 200%. Okay? And here it is how much? 300%. Agar koi foreign ki income apne nahi batai to. And prosecution mein 3 to 10 years. Failure to furnish the return of income before the expiry of the relevant assessment year, then 10 lakh. Failure to disclose foreign income. I think ye chodi do, mat padna bhi nahi hai. Kyunki itne sare kuch bhi yaad nahi rehne wale, this is the one thing you should remember. If you don't disclose, 300% and 3 years to 10 years imprisonment. No penalty shall be passed after expiry of one year from end of financial in which notice of imposition is given. Hmm? And they need to take the permissions of the higher authority. Penalty and prosecution, I would only suggest you to leave. Yeah, these taxes, undisclosed foreign income and asset computed shall be rounded off in the multiples of 100 for MCQs. Liko. Any any amount payable by SSE should be rounded off in the multiples of 10. Generally, in income tax, the tax and income both are rounded off in the multiples of 10. But here it is done in the multiples of 100, undisclosed income and assets. And tax in the multiples of 10. That's all for your undisclosed income and undisclosed asset as per the Black Money Act. This is started from 2013. If any income outside India or any asset is there outside India when it is bought to the tax land, 30% tax they have to pay. And if there are defaulters, 300% of the tax is the penalty. And if imprisonment is not always, it's if, then three years onwards to behave. So like this, and if it is a movable property, you may have purchased movable property in 11-12. Now what is the fair market value on the first day? That's taxable. If it is immovable property, proportionate, you get a deduction if you have shown it part. But you purchased a building in foreign country and 11-12 you showed, uh, 40 lakh, whereas actually that time only it was 1 crore. So now if it has become 10 crore, to utna 40 lakh, whatever proportionate relief you will get. No other exemption, no other deductions are given. And this is taxable in three ways. Either you have filed the return and not disclosed, or you did not file the return for this foreign sources, or forget about income. You don't have any income in foreign country, but you have assets wherein you are beneficial. And financial interest is clear as an agent, as a partner, as a member in corporation. If you have a financial interest outside India, it is said to be an undisclosed asset. That's all for this topic called as block money, black money. Repeat it. If you have any doubt, let me know. And some theory questions as all of you have given. I'll not be giving answers. It will be like too bulky. But theory questions, sabko malu mein na? To ek saath, I'll give you all the theory questions. Thikai? Right, sure. Thank you.